Hi everybody and welcome back to Cheatash. My name is Chris and today we're going to be talking about the Clean Coder Chapter 5 all about test-driven development, TDD. Of course by Uncle Bob C. Martin. If you guys remember last time we talked about Chapter 4 which was the act of coding and kind of all the things that go into the practice of coding and the best things to do to get you to get code out properly, to get your best code out. So we didn't talk about like the rules, kind of like the rules that we talked about in Clean Code. This wasn't a chapter that was repeating that book, Clean Code. It was more so how to put yourself in the best mental state to code your best work. One thing, you know, that we learned was you shouldn't code tired. You shouldn't code if you're angry or upset or if you got a lot on your mind. You know, just take a break and come back to it when you have a clear mind. Also, another important thing we learned was the flow state or getting in the zone is not always the best thing in coding because it keeps you on on a track, like on a treadmill where you're so sure of yourself that you just keep coding and coding and you think that you're doing well because you're coding faster, but it could mean that you're going faster down a wronger road. <laughs> if, if you guys know what I mean there, I'm, no, I'm, I'm using wronger. That's not, the, that's not a proper English word, but that's what we learned about last time. And today we're going to talk about TDD, which is something that I don't do normally at work. But I have used it back when I was doing a practice project for my company, and I did use it on that project because they had the, what did they have? They had the tests already done on the practice project, and then I had to fill in, I had to fill in the code to satisfy the tests, which is kind of like halfway TDD. And the thing is, Uncle Bob says that TDD works and everybody should be using it everybody should be using it and it's so helpful that to not use it is like almost like criminal almost he he says it's really really helpful but you shouldn't be religious about it because maybe there are some instances where you shouldn't use it but he says that it works and you should be using it and i know maybe a question out there for some people is what is tdd and there's three laws that Uncle Bob outlines in this chapter, and he actually have, yeah, I think I actually talked about TDD in the book Clean Code as well. So the three laws are, you are not allowed to write production code until you have written a failing unit test. So you have, let's say you have a project, no code is started, you write a failing unit test first. Then, next law, you are not allowed to write more of a unit test than is sufficient to fail. Nounce is failing. So when you write a unit test, right, it fails. It fails because it doesn't have the code to satisfy it. So then you write the code to satisfy it. Just the minimum to make it pass. Then you come back to your test and you write a little bit more of that test, but not more of a unit test than is sufficient to fail. And then what's going to happen? You're going to run that unit test again and it's going to fail because you just wrote the new code. So now you have to go back to the production code and write the little bit to satisfy that little bit of portion that you wrote in your unit test. Going to the third law, you can't write more production code that is sufficient to pass the current failing unit test. So what ends up happening is that you end up cycling between writing the test and writing the production code, and you go back and forth. And Uncle Bob says in the chapter that these cycles are very short. They could be like 30 seconds long, 30 seconds long, and you just cycle back and forth between production and the unit test. So how this ends up looking is maybe you write a unit test, right? And you mention a class or method that's not yet in existence. So you just, you, you create the class or method, literally, you know, public class car. That's all you create just to satisfy the unit test to get it to compile and run. But then it's going to fail because when you come back to the test and you added extra logic, it's going to fail because the car class is blank. 
it doesn't have some of the logic getters setters what have you yet so you have to come back to the car class write just enough of the production code to get it to pass and you come back to your test it runs it passes but you need more logic so you start adding more logic to it and you just go back and forth between that. Hopefully that makes sense to you guys. But you're cycling between writing the minimum amount of a unit test and the minimum amount of a production code. But it, this provides a lot of benefits, says Uncle Bob. A lot of benefits. So one of the benefits is just certainty. You are certain that you are covering your code. You don't have to go back. With, this is what I do. You don't have to go back, run your test suite, look at the coverage report, make a test, run the coverage report, or run the test suite, look at the coverage report, see what you're missing, which works too, I guess. And that, that's normally what I do. Uh, we have like a sonar report that generates when the project runs in the pipeline and you can see the coverage of your tests. And anytime I'm missing coverage, I go back. And I try to write more tests to satisfy uh, the number of lines that aren't covered. But in this case, if you do it this way, the TDD way, you're certain that you're writing tests that suffice your production code because you're cycling back and forth instantaneously. You're cycling back and forth right away so that you know right away what you need to write in the test to satisfy the production code. So when you end up doing TDD, you end up writing a lot of tests so that if you make changes to the production codes, you can easily run a test suite and check if all the tests pass. If all the tests pass, then you know at least at a base level your new code didn't break anything. And that provides a huge benefit because sometimes we're afraid to make changes to production code because, well, we don't want to break anything. And we don't understand what this code does, which maybe is a separate issue in and of itself. But writing new code, oh, I just don't want to break anything. And this is working as it is. Let's just leave it as it is. So TDD provides certainty. It provides a defect injection rate, which basically means you reduce the number of defects because now you can find out right away if something is broken because you just have to run your test suite that you provided with TDD and you can see if stuff gets gets broken. But even before that, when, you, when you're cycling between production code and unit testing back and forth like that, it's going to reduce the number of defects because, again, you're writing code to satisfy a unit test. And you're writing the unit test to satisfy the production code. So you're going to know lockstep, you know, step by step, lockstep together that, hey, this this code is working because I have the unit test that I'm writing with it, and it passes. Lastly, courage. This is kind of going along with something we said in the certainty point, that whenever you see messy code in your project, you, you never like to touch it because you fear that it's going to cause more issues. Even if the messy code is unreadable, it doesn't make sense. You can really clean it up. You can apply some clean code principles to it. But you don't want to do it because, man, if I make this change in here and I don't understand what it does, it's going to fail the whole project and it's not going to compile. But when you have tests that you trust, you lose all the fear of making changes because... You have all these tests that have been written by TDD that you know exactly cover your production codes because, again, you wrote them in step-by-step. Step. Then it gives you the courage to make changes within your project because you know, you know that you're going to have a test suite there to back you up. Another benefit is documentation. So... When you write a bunch of bunch of unit tests, the unit tests end up being kind of like documents. The unit tests end up being little pieces of documentation that tell you what what lines of code are supposed to do. And I guess to go along with another clean code principle in naming your methods 
in a very intelligent way so it tells you what exactly the action of the method is you can write when you're writing this unit test you want to specify specifically maybe in the unit test method name exactly what it's testing i know i do this at work too you know if i test out oh upload files spanner exception so i know that okay this is testing the upload files of this class and i should get a spanner exception when i see that and then when you have a bunch of tests like that you end up documenting the actions of your whole whole file that you are testing and then another lastly another benefit to tdd is design so when you test first it leads to good design because it ends up being something like you're going on offense versus defense is what uncle bob says in the book so i think the way that i interpret this is it puts you on offense so that you're thinking of design first versus when you just write out all your production code, then you write the test, then you look back in your production code and you're like, oh, I can clean some stuff up. That's kind of going on defense. But when you're going on offense, you're doing it just right off the bat as you're writing the production code, you're leading to good design principles because you're writing the test first. So when you write the test first, you can kind of decouple things. You can decouple, you can have like a decouple design where you have a bunch of maybe classes that perform a single responsibility principle and you can just do that right away. You can have methods that really only perform one action, right? So it leads to better design. And in the end, you know, Uncle Bob says that if you're not using TD, it's unprofessional to not use it. And I don't, I just, I don't know. Uh, I, I don't use TDD where I currently work. I was actually just interviewed for a place and they asked me, you know, if you use TDD because I think that company uses TDD. And it would be an adjustment, man. I, I'm not saying that it wouldn't help beneficially, but I'm just saying maybe it might be slower at first, but maybe being slower up front would make up for the fact that if I do it the other way and I just code everything right away, I end up spending more time writing the unit tests and debugging, etc. So in the end, I think TDD could be faster. It just feels slower in the beginning maybe, but I don't know. I'd like to know what you guys think. Um, yeah, so I, I don't use TDD. No, nobody that I work with I don't think uses TDD. And it'd be interesting to implement it though, and I'd be willing to try it. Next slide. Okay. So what TDD is not, oops, sorry guys. This is the last slide if you couldn't tell. Um, what TDD is not. TDD, again, something that we mentioned, it's not a magic formula or a religion. So that means that even if you do TD, TDD, you still have the opportunity to write bad code. Even if you write the test first, you still have an opportunity to not apply solid principles to your code. You can still, you know, not write method names or variable names very clearly, and they can be super general to where you don't know exactly what's happening. You can still do all that. So it's not a end-all be-all is what Uncle Bob says. You still need to have the, the common sense and the wherewithal to still write code in a clean fashion, even if you're doing TDD. TDD is not going to do that for you. You'll need, you still need to, again, single responsibility principle. You, you need to provide you know separation of concerns. You, you need to name your variables correctly. You, you can't have comments all over the place, etc. Those stuff still apply, and TDD doesn't get rid of those. But at the end of the day, it could be a very useful tool in the workplace and that's going to do it guys thank you very much for listening next time i don't think there'll be a video out next week but i'm going to try to get the next interview out from a local author here cool guy so i can't wait for you guys to to listen to that one and then i've got to prepare for another interview on an important topic so can't wait to to get that one out as well 
Uh, just want to say thank you guys so much for listening. Hopefully you're getting a lot out of this and I'll see you guys very soon. My name is Chris. This has been Cheetash. Take care, everybody.